Hi there, Nigel Saunders here of KW Bonsai. Today we're going to be working my Sarissa trees. These trees are styled to look like African acacia trees, those flat top trees you would see in the African deserts. And today we're going to be repotting it and doing a bit of trimming to the trees. My intention is to have these smaller Sarissa that I'm developing in the background there to be in the same planting as my more mature one. So I'm looking at the height of them and I think the smaller one has to be brought down in height to make it look like perspective so it's in the distance. So I'm going to try and pick a height and do some uh, fairly hard pruning to it. I'm thinking the height will need to come down to kind of about here. So about halfway through the foliage mass which is almost where I pruned it last time but I could go a little shorter still. The little branch here that I pruned back, it grew really well and then suddenly it died off. I think it just wasn't meant to be. All the vigor went up to the top of the tree and this one just died off. But if I do want to grow, you know, some more branches later on in this tree's life, I'm sure it'll get lots of little suckers coming out near the base that I could develop into a another sort of branch. For now, it looks good. It looks like a, you know, an elephant's chewed off the main trunk or damaged it. So it's always good to have a little bit of dead wood on your acacia trees down low. So here I go. I'm going to keep this branch down low here. I'm going to cut back the upper one here. I think, let me see where to... I think right to here, to there, and I've got to cut the other one off to approximately the same height. Doesn't have to be exact, but yeah, we get some good branching down here. So let's go in right in here, right back to there. That looks pretty good, I think. So I'm going to prune back some of the upper growth just to get our flat top canopy underway again. Here's a shot of the two trees together. The height they are right now looks good to me. Um, as I develop the upper structure on the smaller tree, it may start getting a little too tall, but the structure on the main tree will also get higher through the years, so we'll leave it like that for now. It's been two and a half years since this tree was repotted last. It was taken from a square pot and put in this shallow oval pot. The root system on a Sarissa goes really wild if left by itself. And I think we'll see that when we get this tree out of this pot. Um, yeah, they can grow in some really bizarre formations, really twisty and knotty looking. So we'll see, I, I kept in the shallow pot hoping, you know, we get a fairly good root structure underneath. I'll remove the zebra and the rock. I can already see a lot of fine roots underneath the rock there. And I'll scrape away our moss, trying to dig it up in a clump so we can reuse it. There we go. The reason I'm repotting this tree now is not because it's root bound or it's not growing well. It's a uh, sort of preventative maintenance. I don't want to wait till my tree's suffering before I repot it because a suffering tree is under stress already and then if you go to repot it it puts under more stress and it could kill the tree so it's better to repot the tree when it's nice and healthy and growing really well than to leave it too late till it gets too root bound the growth starts getting weaker and then it makes the repotting process more risky because your tree's weak i've got everything off the surface of the soil that i want to remove so now it's time to get the tree out of the pot Okay, I've gone around the edge of the pot 
So now it's time to try and lift the tree out. Now it looks like it's coming out really easily. Lots of roots on the bottom. Lots of fine roots everywhere. Let's take the pot away and we'll start working on the roots. I'm going to begin by raking the roots very gently and see what we get. You can see the layer of sand I have on top, which is another good reason to change the soil and get all that sand out of the soil so it breathes and drains a little better. I think, judging by the amount of root I have here, it was an ideal time to repot. Some of the roots have wrapped right around the edge of the pot. It's definitely root bound. As I'm working on the uh, roots, I'm gonna keep them sprayed so they don't dry out. You can see some of the nice radial surface roots I'm getting from all that uh, selective pruning I did last time. I'll show you how long some of the roots have grown. They grow way out to here, really long. So we're gonna have to do some pruning. They're all tangled up. I'm gonna have to do a peripheral prune on the roots. Get rid of a lot of that, that fine roots that have been growing underneath the main roots and filling the pot up. Okay, so I'm gonna go in and start pruning away roots that are really long. I've been circling the pot in an effort to get the root base into something I can manage. There, that's starting to get down to a more manageable root base. So I'll clean up and we'll come back and work on these roots. So you can see the roots now. I haven't washed them yet, but I'm just gonna un untangle all the ones I can by hand. You can see a little sucker coming up here. There's a shot of the little sucker that's growing up out of the root, so we'll just trim that off. So I want the root base to flow from the trunk into the soil. It doesn't have to be a perfect radial pattern. Um, the acacia trees have a pretty bizarre looking root system, but it, it should be fairly orderly. We don't want it you know, too grotesque. We want it to look like a miniature tree. There are some roots off to the side here that are sticking up. So I'm gonna prune that off, like so. There's another one here that kind of, instead of going down into the soil, it kind of grows parallel or slightly goes uphill. So we'll get rid of that one too. There's a few around here that are growing upwards don't want. Some crossing roots here I can remove. There's a stub from a sucker here I can remove. I also want to balance the root system. Uh, I've got one fairly large root here and it's very vigorous out of the tip. It divides into like one, two, three, four quite a few divisions, so I'm going to prune off the thickest part of it. Like so. And keep some of those divisions. Uh, not this one, it crosses. but Yeah, maybe I can prune that better here. Yeah, like that. It also fixes the direction of it a bit. So it stays Going radial. I'll keep misting my roots, keeping them nice and moist. So over this side, I've got quite a bump here and I think that's from a sucker. So I'm going to have to do a really hard prune and remove that. Here we go. Like so. That gets the roots flowing into the soil better. This one at the back kind of flows into the soil and it, it comes up. I don't like that. So I'm going to prune away some of the upper part of it, like this root right here. I 
get in there like that. Come back a little bit. There. Get rid of that. I can't do too much about the rest of it other than untangle all everything. There's some root hairs on top here I can remove. They're sticking up. I'm in the process of trimming off all the duplicate roots on the bottom. So I'm just keeping my radial surface roots in a nice flat bottom on the root system. And the top will taper into the soil nicely. That's looking pretty good. Here's what we're left with. Yeah, it's not a bad root system. It's uh, definitely improving over the years. I think it's pretty well ready for planting now. Got the root system sorted out pretty well. Got some crossing roots here I think I gotta get rid of. There. That's better. Yeah, I think that'll do. That's pretty good. I've got my pot all washed up. I'm going to put the drainage screens in and put a shallow layer of bonsai soil and then we'll position the tree. I'm just cutting the drainage screen now. I just place it over the holes like that. This is just nylon window netting, mosquito netting. You're using screen windows. This pot does have a slight chip in it. That's the only reason I could afford it. It's a really nice Japanese pot. Okay, I'm ready to put the soil in. So I'll just hold the drainage screens in place and just put a little bit of soil around them so they don't move around. And then I'll fill the pot up with a shallow layer of soil. The soil mix I'm using is half perlite, half turfus, and then I add some fur bark particles. The fur bark particles are from the uh, Orchid Society. And it's the first time I've tried using the fur bark. I've always used composted pine bark previous years. But you can't get it in nice fine pieces like this. So I'm trying the fur bark for the first time and I'm hoping it works well. I'm sure it will. I probably won't notice any difference. In this planting, I'm going to have the soil level and the tree is going to be on a slight hill just to uh, make it look more uh, like an African landscape. I'm going to water this layer of soil. You can hear the soil sucking up all the water. I'm ready to place the tree now. So my problem before was this root was coming right down the front of the tree. So we have a root each side, which is good. I think that is a good front. What about there? Now, I gotta check the position in the pot. So I'm going to come back here and look at it from the distance. I know before we had it more to the right hand side. And right now I've got it placed pretty well exactly on center. Which looks too symmetrical. So I'm going to try moving it back closer to where we had it in the pot. Somewhere about here. Yeah, that looks pretty good there. It could even go over just a little bit more, I think. I'm also going to move it to the back a little bit. See how that looks. Yeah, 
I like it there. That looks uh, quite good. I'll have to level the top of the canopy. Make sure that's uh, with the horizon. Don't want the tree on a, a tilt or a slant. Okay, I think that's good. And I think the height, if I build up a slight hill around the roots, I think the height will be pretty good also. Before I start filling it in with soil, I'm going to try and sort out as many of these fine surface roots as I can. The roots are fairly stiff on this tree. So while they're young and flexible, you can do some repositioning. Okay, I'm going to start putting some soil around. I'm going to build up a bit of a hill underneath the tree. There's a shot of it from sort of eye level. Gives us lots of height. I can slowly, kind of slowly expose the surface roots. But for now, we'll cover them up until the tree gets established or the roots get established in the pot. So let's start filling it in. I think that looks good. The top of the tree looks level. So I think that's good. I'll start filling in the soil. Okay, I'll get all the soil worked in to the roots. I've got the soil worked into the roots now and the tree is quite stable in the pot. The next operation is to level the soil out. So I want to have it flat and then a bit of a mound by the tree. From lower down, you can see how the landscape's flat and then there's a little bit of a hill underneath the tree. So I like that look. And uh, in future, I'll be removing some of the soil around the roots to expose the surface roots some more. And eventually we'll be planting moss and, uh, you know, landscaping the tree to turn it into a penging. Our next step will be to water the tree. I'll start the watering operation by misting the tree and the top of the soil. It just helps to stop everything washing away or blowing away. Then I'll get the watering can and give it a thorough watering. I always use rainwater. In the winter time I collect it. Sometimes I have to collect snow and melt it in here. The repotting operation for this tree is done. Aftercare will be critical for this tree to recover and to live. Uh, I'll be keeping it in the humid plant room here. I'll be misting the top of the tree three or four times a day. And I'll be keeping it out of direct sunlight and more in indirect sunlight. It should only take about uh, three or four days for new roots to start growing and start feeding the top of the tree again. So within about a week, care will be as per normal for the tree. Today's update is the ficus root over temple. It's a ficus benjamina growing over a stone temple that I cemented together with small stones. And it's growing well. However, my moss isn't doing so well. We had a very dark, cloudy winter this year. So there hasn't been a lot of sunshine and to grow in moss indoors, you need a lot of light. So now the days are getting brighter and the moss is starting to green up again. So I think by spring we'll have lots of moss on the tree and we'll probably be picking it off. So that's an update on the ficus benjamina root over temple. I'll also show uh, Julian's Haworthia that we potted the other day. It's looking really good too. So that's it for today. Nigel Saunders of KW Bonsai. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.